Hey folks, Ray from DCGamerica.com here. Today I've got something a little bit different that Quark just announced. Now Quark, you're familiar with them for their power meters. They've been doing that for like almost a decade now, I think. Uh, and then they've also got other stuff they've made like the Quark Collector, which is this, you know, uh, wireless tracking device that you can use for races and stuff like that, or just training to be able to take your data into it and spit it out to the cloud and it connects via cellular network no matter where you are in the world. Cool stuff. But today they've announced something a little bit different than everything else before and really anything else anyone else has done before. And that is a tire pressure sensor. Uh, uh, now on this wheel right here, you have this little doohickey that attaches to your valve stem and that measures your tire pressure in real time and transmits it on to a Garmin Edge device, a Wahoo Element or Bolt, um, as well as your phone. Uh, now it's pretty cool. Actually, as I pump up the tire, it's literally showing it split second by split second going back to this device. So it's not something you have to wait like, you know, five minutes for it to do. It does it in real time. Um, and there's a couple different scenarios there. One is that as you're riding a race or training, you can just glance at that data field on your your Garmin Edge or your Wahoo Bolt or whatever it may be uh, and see that data showing up there, which is kind of handy, especially those scenarios where you're like, oh, I'm going really slow. Maybe my tire is flat. I'm sure if you've done any sort of uh, race, you know that feeling. And in most cases, it's just simply you're being tired. Uh, but sometimes it really is the tire and be able to just get that confidence, that reassurance there is kind of handy. The other interesting thing you can start to do with it is track your tire pressure over the course of a race or a long training day over just time in general. Um, and so the way that works is that when it's transmitting this data, it is doing that uh, to your edge device in particular, or the, the bolts and the edges is a little more clear because it goes right into the fit file. And from that point in time, you'll see it later on on Garmin Connect uh, in your fit files or any third party app that supports that data type. From there, you can do all sorts of kind of fun stuff about looking at, you know, your tire pressure and saying, does it change on a cold day? Does it decrease faster on a cold day versus a hot day? Uh, and stuff that certainly there are studies out there that can do, but it's nice to be able to see that in real time and look at something and go, yeah, maybe I should make a change. So how do you get installed? Well, it's pretty easy. What you do is you take this little gadget right here. Now, when I go and unhook this from the tire, I've got a little bit of tire pressure on there, so it's gonna hear that air come out. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that right now. There we go. So there goes the air. Boom, out. Um, now, this is all it is, this tiny little thing. You get two of them in the package, so one for the front, one for the rear. Uh, when you go ahead and install them, you use the app to specify whether it's front or rear. You also specify things like tire width, uh, as well as your weight, and that'll even give you a recommended tire pressure for that given circumstance. And there's a lot more settings on the app to be able to dig into that a little bit more. Um, but from an installation standpoint, you need to remove your valve stem. So on a wheel, the valve stem sits right there in the middle. Um, you just simply unpull it. There's a little tool that comes with uh, this. It's a tiny little thing. You can use other things to remove the valve stem. It takes like four seconds. Uh, and then you can go ahead and put this just simply right in. You're just gonna go and rotate that around uh, until it's down in there effectively just like anything else. And there we go. Uh, and now it's in. And then you just pump your tire like you normally would. Now the downside of this is this makes a really big doohickey on your wheel. Like you talk about long valve stem, this is one hell of a long valve stem. Um, so it's certainly like kind of flashy, you're gonna see it there. It's got the flashing lights that indicates that it's powered on. Uh, it does have AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart in it. You can see that uh, by the little tag on the back there showing that. Um, and you can, it's supposed to last about, I think about 300 hours or so. So about the same as like a power meter, simple coin cell battery and you're good to go. And I keep in mind that 300 hours is of moving time. So the same time you would replace a power meter battery, you just swap the coin cell on this and and uh, you're off and running. Now this will work with pretty much any Presta sized valve stem. And to be totally clear, this is definitely valid with mountain bikes and fat tire bikes. Any sort of bike that has a Presta valve, you are good to go. Uh, if you're looking right now, that's what a Presta valve looks like. So that's what you're looking for on your bike. So you may be wondering what happens if you got a flat in a race? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. You would simply undo this here just by simply rotating it out again like I did earlier. And now when you don't have a inflated tire and not trying to hold it up for the camera, it's a lot quicker. You can do it in like three to four seconds. I'm probably at just under 10 seconds or so here for this, um, doing all this in front of you. Uh, and then you have an, you obviously just swap out your tube like normal and you go ahead and pump that up um, probably without this. So you, you can't pump up the tire and then put this on. Uh, you have to remove the valve stem and given a race scenario, you probably don't want to sit around spending the time to remove that valve stem and, and to pop it back in place. Uh, nonetheless, you could do that if you wanted to. You just got to have a little tool thing or mus enough muscle to be able to pop that valve stem out. So now, as I mentioned, you will get that tire pressure in real time uh, delivered to your Garmin or soon the Wahoo Element and Bolt series there. Uh, I have not tested the Wahoo Element side, but I have tested the Garmin side as well as 
as my cell phone uh, and I can't get the tire pressure there in real time. And then it's again, saved into the fit file that you can view on Garmin Connect of what it looks like over the course of a ride uh, and seeing that tire pressure change and whatnot. From a Garmin compatibility standpoint, it uses the Connect IQ data field. Uh, so it works with pretty much any Garmin Edge series device uh, over 150 bucks or so made in the last, I don't know, like four years, three years, something like that. Um, and virtually any watch that you would buy in the last three or four years as well, uh, all supports Connect IQ data fields. So that's pretty cool. No limitations on sensors or anything like that. As long as it supports Connect IQ data fields, you're good to go. I suppose the really the bigger question is whether or not this is worth it at all. Um, and at 200 bucks for the pair, it's kind of pricey. You can't buy them like one half for a, you have to buy both of them in the package. Uh, the package has two of them in there. Um, and I don't know, like I think this would sell really, really well at 99 bucks. Um, and I know there's lots of people that say, ah, oh, it's silly, who needs a tire pressure sensor? And they're probably right. Um, but at least it's kind of interesting at 99 bucks and it's more of like an impulse buy versus 200 bucks. It's it's a lot to spend to know your tire pressure. And yeah, there are certainly been a number of races and stuff where I've sat there, especially endurance like Ironmans and stuff like that, where you get like three quarters of the way through the bike leg and you're going, I think my, my tire must be flat. It must be flat. And of course it's never flat, uh, but to have that like a mental reassurance, or maybe you don't want that mental reassurance that no, your tire is perfectly fine. Or maybe it is getting low on air pressure, a slow leak or whatnot, and to be able to maybe make that change and, and get yourself off and running. Uh, if you're in Ironman racing, this could actually be quite a big deal. Now, don't forget to hit up my full in-depth review on this down in the doohickey there. Uh, you can go and find that and check out some more of the data and stuff like that. Uh, it's really pretty straightforward though. Like it's not a complex device at all. You just screw it on, you're good to go. And uh, not a lot more I can say about that than this. Um, with that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and don't forget to check out all of the new devices that have hit this week. It's been a crazy week at Sea Otter and it's really gonna continue for the next few weeks. There's a couple companies that didn't quite make the cut for Sea Otter uh, that ended up delaying their products into the next couple weeks here. Uh, and I'm really excited about all the stuff we're gonna see uh, between now and honestly between now and your bike i mean there's just so much cool stuff but especially the next few weeks uh lots of good stuff and all the things that i published this week as well don't forget to like that subscribe button um or if you like this hit the like button have a good one